Hello, hi, Morris Three Pules. Um, this is your lesson on the introduction to the USA topic. Now, I realise that obviously you won't have uh, new jotters to do this, so if you can, please, if you type this up either on a Word document, if you're using a laptop and you prefer using Word, type your notes up on that just now, just so it's easy for you to print off when you do get your jotters when you're back to school, or if you have any space in any of your other two jotters that you want to maybe do this work in the back of those jotters, uh, and work your way back like that, or if you have any lined paper at all, then you can do it on this as well. So this is the USA topic that we're starting. Now, this first lesson uh, is just to be an introduction to the United States of America. Now, what we'll be covering in this uh, topic for the USA? The first part which we'll be looking at, which you'll mostly cover online, is how the US political system allows democratic participation. Now that's just fancy few words for basically saying, how do people in the USA participate in politics? What is the process? How are they allowed to participate in politics? Do they get to vote? Do they get to protest? What is their participation like? The second part that we cover is US political institutions and government decision making, so how the US government actually works. What is the powers of the president in the USA? What powers does the president have? What limits are there on the power of the president in the USA? Our third part of this topic, we look at social economic inequality and its impact on specific groups in the USA. So why is there inequality in the USA? Why is it that African Americans, Hispanics and other minority groups suffer more inequality compared to, say, white Americans? So we'll look at that in different areas, including education, healthcare, crime, and also we'll look closely at immigrants and why they suffer inequality as well. We'll look at how well the US government actually responds to um, the social economic inequality. So obviously you've just done an essay for the Scottish and UK government's responses to inequalities in um, Britain. How does the US government actually respond to social economic inequality? What procedures and policies do they have in place? And then the last part of this topic, we look at the USA's international influence. So how does the USA interact with other countries? How does it use its military across the world? How, what's its involvement like in international organisations like the G8, the NATO, United Nations, all of that? Now, America itself. America is known as the land of opportunity. Now, the search for the American dream has been one of the most influential pull factors for decades for reasons for people going to America. Now, many immigrants, including those who are unauthorised, moved to USA to try and make their fortune from what is a capitalist system in the USA through hard work and sheer determination. Now, this has not been the reality for the large majority of immigrants who have went to the USA. The Statue of Liberty in the USA symbolises democracy as well as international friendship. Now, it's a colossal symbol of freedom to millions around the world. Its inscription reads this. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. I left my lamp beside the golden door. So ultimately, America's had an open door policy for many, many years, and it's known as the land of opportunity for people to try and go to and get rich. Now, as mentioned there, some people do still go legally to the USA every year to try and do this. Other people try and go to the USA illegally to try and achieve their dream. Now, USA itself, this is just a map here of the USA to let you see some of the different states that exist across the USA. You may or may not have heard of some of these states before, um, and you've got a picture just beside each state to symbolise and represent something that's uh, important to that state or what it's well known for. So that is the states across America there. Now, ethnic groups in the USA. Because of the USA's past history, it has um, a lot of different ethnic groups in the USA. So you have, for example, there's Donald Trump, a famous American who um, would be white in terms of his ethnic group. You have uh, Beyonce Knowles, the singer, who is an African American. You have a famous Asian actor, actress, sorry, who is uh, obviously in the Asian group of Asian Americans. And then you have Jennifer Lopez there at the end, who would be known as Hispanic in terms of her ethnic so the USA has uh, a mixture of different ethnic groups within it. It has more ethnic groups than just these four, it also has Native Americans as well, who have obviously been in America the longest, but are now the smallest ethnic group in the USA. Now, your first activity for today is for you to use your own knowledge to complete the key facts on the USA, and it says they're colouring the pie chart of the different ethnic groups in the USA, and make sure you colour in the key at the bottom of the page too. However, you don't obviously have access to this, so if you even just wanted to write down your jotters, the percentage that links to each ethnic group. 
So these are the two pages from your booklet that you will need to use. Now, this has been uploaded via Teams as well, so you'll be able to access this in the files on Teams, and when, also when you return to school, you'll all get a copy of your booklet. So these are the two pages here that you need to use. So it'll say Topic Introduction USA, so you have information there which you can read over, and then your aim is to complete on the right-hand side here the key facts in America. That is the pie chart there, just in more detail, obviously for the ethnic groups in the USA, but as I said, you probably won't have access, this will be able to print it off, so if you even just wanted to write down your jotter, the percentage beside each ethnic group. A wee extension task for your jotters and booklets away, I said here, but obviously you're doing this from home, um, but you could have a go at trying to name as many of the 50 US states as you can without using your booklet. Okay, so that was a short introduction to the USA for you to complete. Now, section one, we look at political participation in the USA. Now, to start with, I want you to think about in what ways can people participate in the political process? And try and list as many different ways as you can. And the pictures here offer some clues. So you've got people with their hands up. So people can vote in the USA. That's one way they can participate in the political process. Also, you have a picture there of Donald Trump and Joe Biden. So people can also stand as candidates in the USA as well. Now, the foundation of the USA, if we go back to the very beginning, the USA actually used to be ruled by America. And it wasn't until uh, the Revolutionary War that America broke free. And it was actually led by 13 uh, states on the east coast of America to break free from uh, Britain. You have a picture there of the American Revolutionary War against the British. And on the right-hand side there, that is the American Constitution that resulted in America becoming independent. Now, you're... Next activity, when we're looking at part political participation here, is for you to take the hen in your jot of the US political system. You're looking to explain what the US Constitution is and what it actually says, and what sort of rights does the US Constitution provide US citizens with. And you're looking to use this page in your booklet here, which again is available on Teams via the Files folder. How the US political system allows democratic participation. So you're looking to use the information here to complete the activity one at the bottom of the page. Now, the two main political parties that exist in the USA are the Democrats and the Republicans. Now, in terms of both... Now, Joe Biden, he represents the Democrats, and Donald Trump, he's part of the Republican Party. And you have here the colour associated with the Democrat, Democratic Party is usually blue, and the colour associated with the Republican Party is usually red. And you have the symbols of either party there. Now, the typical voters who vote for each party... For the Republican Party, their symbol is an elephant, and for the Democratic Party, their symbol is a horse. Now, the Republican Party, they usually represent people from more wealthier backgrounds. So, that's people that would have a bit more money. Usually, their voters are more rural, and they believe in individualism. So people helping themselves, and they believe in lower tax rates, especially for the rich. You have the Democratic Party who represent people from more working class backgrounds, and they have more of their voters in urban areas, so in cities. They believe in collectivism, so people helping each other, and they believe in higher taxes for the wealthy as well. Now, this is just an interesting poll here to show you. Um, this was an exit poll, so we're still obviously waiting for to get the true demographics of the recent election that's taken place in America. But this just lets you see how certain people voted for uh, Biden or Trump in the US election. Now this is a sample size of around 15,000 respondents. So this lets you see the sort of support that either party has. So Joe Biden is in blue there and Donald Trump is in red. Now you can see obviously in terms of white men and white women, Donald Trump has more support than Joe Biden. But if you look down for black men and black women, you see that Biden has overwhelmingly more support than Donald Trump and his party. Also, in terms of Hispanic men, Hispanic women and Asian and other ethnicities, Biden again has more support. So, Biden and his party tend to gather support more from the ethnic minorities, whereas it's predominantly white people that support Trump and his party. Now, your next activity, activity two, is looking at the political party. So you're looking to take the head in US political parties and their support in your jotter. Split your page into two and create a basic fact file about the two main political parties in the USA, the Republicans and Democrats. You can include a picture of their logo, you can include some of their policies, any previous presidents and their support base, so who actually votes for them. And this is the page in your booklet here that you need to be using to help you to complete this task. 
So for this lesson, obviously you have your essay due this week as well. So the USA um, work due by Friday 22nd of January. We're looking for you to have completed the intro, activity one, um, the key facts on America. So that's the two pages in the book that you need to use. Then the first section in this topic, political participation. We're looking for you to have done activity one, which is the US Constitution, and activity two, which is the US political party's basic fact file. Again, if you have any questions, please let myself or Miss McLean know via Teams. Thank you.